Hi and welcome to the Migro YouTube channel. My name is Shane and I'm the founder of Migro. Today we're going to look at HID technology. We're going to give you an overview of efficiency, spectrum and cost for the main three technologies used in indoor growing. And there's lots of different types of HID bulbs, uh, little variances in the technology, but the main three different types are metal halide, high pressure sodium and ceramic metal halide all used in indoor growing regularly and all proven in that area. HID bulbs, they do have common traits between these three types so we've got our, our connector on the back, we've got a outer sleeve which is a protective uh, tube and that protects the bulb inside which is this tube inside with electrodes at each end. Inside that tube, uh, depending on the, the type of bulb, is different gases and depending on those different gases when electricity is put through them, they will emit different colours of light. So you've got to run these, these bulbs from an electronic ballast. An electronic ballast is a controller really for the uh, starting of the bulb and then it, it, it keeps the bulb running and runs it reliably and efficiently. So the, uh, at the startup, in order for the electronic spark to jump across this big gap, it uh, is run at a very high voltage, often up to about 4,000 volts. So your, your electronic ballast has a little transformer in it that allows it to generate a spike of a high voltage to get it started. And once the spark is established across this gap through the gas, it then increases and regulates the voltage and the current to get it to run at its, its optimum level. If you're connecting a metal halide or a HPS bulb, you're going to need uh, to, to screw it into a socket. It's an E40 socket, it's the same for metal halide and HPS bulbs. For a ceramic metal halide, it is different. The connector is a PGZ18 connector, which is a push and twist. You can get an adapter which adapts from the E40, the one for HPS and metal halide, uh, to the PGZ18 and you just um, push it in and twist and you can put it into the same fitting. So quite handy if you're upgrading from HPS or metal halide to uh, CMH, you don't want to spend too much getting all new connections. In terms of sizes, uh, that's in power consumption. The range for HPS is the widest. It starts off with relatively small wattages of 150 watts and goes up to 1000 watts. So it's 150, 250, 400, 600, 750 and 1000 watt would be the commonly available um, sizes. Then in metal halide they tend to run from 400 watt up to uh, 1000 watts, so 400 watt, 600 watt, 1000 watt are commonly available. CMH, ceramic metal halide, is slightly different. They're uh, only available at 315 watts uh, currently. Well, here we have all the lights started up, so you can see the difference in the spectrum. The HPS is obviously very yellow. The ceramic metal halide is quite a, a blue-white, a cool white, and the CDM is a, a more mid-neutral white tone. In this case we're using a 1000 watt HPS to show you the difference in sizes. A 1000 watt should really be run um, in a large reflector. You can get away with a medium reflector and 600 watt and, and a budget on, on anything smaller than that. But really to make the most out of the 1000 watt systems you really need a high efficiency, a high quality reflector. You can see also the um, digital ballast is quite large in comparison with the 600 watt and then the 300 watt for the CDM. So again the size differentiation. Each of the grow lights has been tested in a 4x4 tent at the same hanging height with the same reflector. 
We've taken 64 PAR readings or PPFD readings at the canopy height level and we've recorded the spectrum output from each bulb using an Ascensitec Passport spectra radiometer. The metal halide has a lot of blue in the spectrum which results in a cool white output of 4000K. It's the lowest in efficiency at 0.9 ppfd per watt, that's the power output, power efficiency. Ceramic metal halide is a much more balanced spectrum, called a full spectrum. Neutral white at 3000K colour temperature and the highest power efficiency of 1.3 ppfd per watt. The HPS is very low in blue uh, and high in yellow and green. It has a warm colour temperature overall at 2000K and mid efficiency of 1.16 ppfd. So we have the results for the three grow lights now and we can see the comparison of the efficiency and the spectrum first of all. The metal halide has a high level of blue in the spectrum at, at, at just under 25% which is great for purely vegetative growing but um, it does not uh, suit all the way through the flowering uh, through the cycle into flowering because 23% basically is too much anything over 15% is is a waste it's too much blue and it's going to be photosynthetically less efficient than uh, for example the CMH light which has the optimum at around 15% that's the three and a half thousand K one you can increase the blue level with the 4000K and reduce it with the 3000K CMH but the 3500 uh, really is optimum for um, full spectrum growing. The HPS on the other hand has very low levels of blue, uh, less than 5% in, in nearly all cases, about 3% typically. This is a very low level of blue and will result in uh, a lot of stretching. It is photosynthetically uh, relatively reasonably efficient at 1.16 micromoles per watt, uh, but uh, not as efficient as the CMH. So taking into account the spectrum, the CMH is the winner, and taking into account efficiency, the CMH is the winner. The last one to look at then is the cost. Because of the output of the different lights is different using a factor to level up the lights and the leveling factor is the power output. The HPS is the largest watt wattage multiplied by the, the best efficiency for that wattage. Anyway, it's the highest power output and it averages um, 519 ppfd across the 1.2 by 1.2 grow area. What we've done is looked at how many metal halide fixtures and how many CMH fixtures do you need to reach that same level? So we can level them all up in terms of output and then compare the cost to get that same output in power terms from each light. So for the um, metal halide, it's also a, a 600 watt fixture, but it's less efficient. So you need 1.2 of those to match your HPS for power output. The CMH is only uh, just nearly half, or just over half the wattage. However, it's more efficient. So that results in a number of fixtures required being 1.7. And we've used those factors to multiply by the fixture cost and the running costs for each grow light system to come out with our lifetime cost. And you can see it here now. And here you can see that although the um, CMH is more expensive as a fixture upfront. It's improved efficiency over the metal halide and HPS means that it is uh, only marginally 5% more expensive than the HPS over three years. Now, given the fact that you can keep the same bulbs, you have the uh, superior uh, spec light spectrum, it really is very obvious decision that the CMH is the best value for money. Just with regard to the efficiency of the systems overall, what we've shown you is the 600 watt fittings for the metal halide and HPS, and we've shown them in a, a standard uh, tent with reflective walls. These efficiencies can be tweaked and improved a little bit, so as you go up higher to the 1000 watt fixtures, you go to the double-ended, uh, you go to the 400 volt uh, uh, options, 
and really high quality reflectors. You can get about 1.4 micromoles per watt from the HPS. Similar with the um, metal halide, you can improve on that, but that's just a sort of mid-range uh, efficiency level. But all things are relative and uh, the same would go for the CMH as the metal halide and the HPS. You improve the reflectors, slightly better ballast, uh, yeah, uh, reflective walls and you can you can jump them up but it would be the same for all of them so hopefully you can see that it's a reasonably fair uh, and uh, good uh, assessment and comparison of the lights overall so clearly CMH is the winner uh, it's been around for some time but really people don't seem to have taken it on board I know for example in the local grow shops here it's it's they're not pushed as much as I think they should be. Uh, great technology, great light from it, uh, very efficient, great spectrum, um, reasonably inexpensive to run, what's not to like. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, lots to discuss, lots of opinions. I hope you share them with us and leave comments and uh, we'll do our best to get back to you and um, yeah, happy growing and uh, please subscribe. Take care. Bye.